another episode of the WFN Extra Time Podcast. I'm your host, Dre Footy, and today we welcome back Gary Lamb talking to us from Sunderland in England. And we'll be discussing the recent trip to Kenya, Africa he took, and, and also talk a little bit about his work this, that he's doing with the team Sunderland AFC Karachi. Gary, welcome back to the show, and how are you today? I'm great, Andre. Uh, enjoyed the trip over to Kenya, great. and especially watching the boys win the cup after you know the success we've managed to help bring them through sponsorship and donations, etc. Great, yeah. We, we've been looking at a lot of the pictures on the website and the Facebook page. It's, it's really been amazing to, to follow that, and that's what we're going to try to get into. But you know, before we get into the actual trip, can you tell the uh, WFN audience a little about your relationship with the team? How, how are you connected with the team? I came across the team on Facebook. I used to be secretary of a local charity back in my hometown in England. And we used to do a lot of work with the ex-Sunland footballers. So I was always looking for anybody on Facebook to connect and be friends with who had Sunland or SAFC or maybe the Sunland badge as their profile picture. And I came across a name, Sunland AFC Karachi. Never thought anything about it. Clicked to be friends. And anyway, a couple of weeks later, I was on the on the computer working on something. And the Facebook message popped up and just said, Hello, my name's Paul. I'm manager of Sunland AFC Karachi in Kenya. And at first, I think we all think the same things. Be very wary because we all know like the, the big scams that come out of Africa. But after a few weeks of checking them all out, we found out everything was, you know, all above board. And the team had actually started up to um, give the youngsters and the youth of the area uh, a focus in life because uh, what some of the um, village elders and some of the community leaders were noticing was that a lot of the children were getting involved in vice and crimes and maybe even into drugs, you know. Um, so that they wanted to give them something else to try and take them down a different path and the form Sunland AFC Karachi. Great. Right, yeah, it's been it's been amazing too to see the progress since that time when you first got involved, and so you know we recently um, had the, the a successful season; they were promoted, and now uh, in this off season and, and really the preseason, we have uh, something called the Kenyan England Friendship Cup, which which took you to to Kenya. Um, how did that come about? How did that comp- competition come about? Well. When, when I got involved with the team, you know, we, we helped manage to raise or I put appeals out for getting kit and boots and bits and pieces for them. And we were overwhelmed. We sent over 17 crates of kit initially. And then we realized that, you know, this team couldn't survive because they had no money. Um, obviously, with Kenya being such a poor country, uh, the players had a choice of do I play for the team and pay me subs for the team to keep the team running or do I put a ta- meal on the table for my family well obviously you've only got one choice in the matter there you know your family's got to come first so I set about raising sponsorship and because of the world economic climate at the minute I didn't go out and look for one big sponsor I set about going for lots of small sponsors there's three different ways you can sponsor the team. You can either be a main sponsor for £500 a year English money, which is equivalent of about $800 US a year. You can be an associate sponsor for £100 English money, which is around about $160 US. Or you can become the sponsor of one of the players or the officials or the academy players for £50 a year, which is the equivalent of... 80 US dollars. Um, and I found out, you know, gradually we got more and more people on board and we were, we went out, we were able to go out and buy them new boots, new kit. We erected new metal goal posts because they don't exist over there. The majority of the teams build the goals out of tree branches. And then we went on to things like leveling the pitch, which We've had it level, but it's still not good enough. Sometime in the future, we'll need leveling again. Um, but it's now it's, they've got an area that's playable, 
that they can use as a football pitch. But because it's free to pay for the play for the team now, all the good players in the area want to come and play for the team, which build, brings a lot of publicity to the village and the surrounding villages. And all the young children as well have now got a successful team to look up to. And all the kids want to be off the streets and they want to come to the academy training at football each night. So it's been a huge success. And I think during our trip, the, the biggest thing I came across was the fact that all the village elders are now back in the scheme because they can see how it's worthwhile to everybody in the area and how the kids have now got something to do. And uh, they actually told us while we were over there that crime's gone down over 70% in the village wow. and the surrounding areas. There's a the power of which football is just for you. Incredible, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and, and the success, you know, for a little bit of money, we can say it before the, we we came across the team, the team had almost been relegated. They came eighth out of ten in their league, almost got relegated. Whereas we came in with a little bit of financial support, the team got promoted straight away in the first year. We were behind them. And then now they've just started the new season by winning the Kenya England Friendship Cup. Now the reason we did that, um, one of the sponsorship packages, one of the big ones, was be the main sponsor of the Kenya England Friendship Cup. And thankfully, my boss at work from Northern Freight Services, where I work, he took that on board. But what he also did as well, he realised that there was other teams in the league who were struggling. Some even dropped out of the league last year because they couldn't pay the basic fees, like the referees' fees or registering the team at the beginning of the season. So we invited three teams who, to give them a kickstart for the new season, uh, he donated 6,000 Kenyan shillings to each of them teams, which is it's only about £50 English money or $80 US. Um, but that pays their registration fees and gets them into the league ready for the start of the season. So they got a huge boost out of that. The, the competition can only be held over two days. And the league officials have now passed that it can be a yearly event. Okay. So it will be the second weekend of February every year. Obviously, our team will be in it. And then we will select three different teams every year who we think need financial help. Gotcha. Now, I just want to clarify, we don't pick teams that we think will be easy to beat. In fact, the team that we beat in the final this year were picked by the Kenyan football officials uh, because it was a team struggling, and they were also a team two leagues above us wow. called Morindat. They were the team we played in the final. And we have nothing to do with the selection of the officials the league officials select them as well. So we just wanted to make sure everything was above board and nobody could ever accuse the team of saying, well, you pick three easy teams to play or you pick the referee or anything like that. Um, this is why we involve the league officials. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, well, Gary, tell us, though, why you, we, why you chose to personally go to Kenya for this cup. Well, I suppose after... Watching the boys get promoted, you know, at the end of last season, which was about September, October, uh, the wish was always there to go across. There was a lot of people coming on the internet saying they'd love to go across and, you know, we'd arranged for the Kenya England Friendship Cup to be on. Um, but then I got a film crew interested in wanting to make a documentary about the team, how they'd risen so quickly with support from literally fans around the globe, you know, not just Sunderland fans. Yes, the main core of the sponsors are Sunderland fans in England. But, you know, it, it, the help of yourself, um, a couple of other, I think we've got about four sponsors in the USA now. Um, some people up in Oregon, New Jersey, Atlanta, where yourself is, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got people in Scandinavia. We've got one in Doha in the Far East. So the power of the internet is a great thing. I think people see the story 
But the good part about it is, if you do donate, you can always either go onto our website at www.safc-karachi.com or on our Facebook page at Sunderland AFC Karachi. And you can always see the updates, so you're constantly having the opportunity to see how your money's being spent. And and nobody takes any money from the pot. It all goes into gradually going beyond the team and the academy. Um, it spreads out in the community because while we were there, we, we built some dugouts, you know, which is a very... Maybe the team's only right at the top in Kenya have such facilities. And what we did there, we used the local carpenter in the village to build one of the dugouts while we built the other one. So that local carpenter was getting some work. We used a lit, an old gentleman in the village who had a little pickup truck to transport all the timber and everything to the village. So he got paid for that. So we've made a policy now, if we ever want any jobs done, we'll use the people in the community so it benefits, you know, the money starts getting spread out and everybody in the community benefits. Um, yeah. And that's what the village, that's the village elders was so appreciative of that. Yeah, and that's been one of the, 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 the bright points that I've taken from the whole existence of the club is to see how it has affected the local community there. And you had told me once about um, there was a lady who also helped with um, um, washing the kits uh, each week and how what a difference that made for her family. And the other examples that you've given, it really show, and, and including the, uh, the the drop in crime, almost 70%. It, it really does show you the, the positive effect of this club going forward and, and the good that uh, the sponsorship has been doing for the club. Can you go into more detail about how valuable the foreign sponsorship has been to the club and what would help the team going forward sponsorship-wise? Well, sponsorship-wise, we now, for this coming season, which kicks off, I've been told, in about three to four weeks, um, it's a little bit up in the air at the moment, the exact date, because for the first time in the history of Kenya, I don't know if you're aware, yesterday, the 4th of yeah. Uh, March is the first time they've had elections in the country. Yeah, I saw the news so reports all, on that. All the elections are being going on, and it's a huge event in Kenya. So more or less everything stood still for a few days. But the benefits, one set of people we owe a huge debt to is the school where we have our pitch, right. Karari Primary School, uh, because they, they allowed us to have the land, uh, which you know, the boys cleared. Well, actually, when you're standing on the pitch itself now, and you look to the right of the pitch, behind the dugout, you'll you'll see trees everywhere. That's exactly how the pitch used to be. The boys dug up trees. They made it as best they could themselves. And then, as I say, we've got no condition now where there's a football pitch there for the whole community to use. But the, the school themselves... It was so hard, you know, living, like, coming from a country like where you come from in the USA right. or where I come from in England, we grow up and just expect things. Over there, they expect nothing and are so thankful for anything. But that, that school's never had a penny spent on it since 1968. Wow. It's, it's amazing. There's almost 700 school children to 13 teachers in total and that includes the headmaster so you're talking 50 kids to every teacher now the first day we were there we went into the school met the headmaster had a little chat with him and we went into one of the classrooms and noticed there was no teacher there and the headmaster explained to us they don't have the money to bring in a replacement teacher if one of the teachers is off sick them 50 kids in that classroom had to sit unattended all day long. They had no lessons, nobody to look after them, nothing. Wow. It, it is, it's heartbreaking to watch. But the, and it's, there's no electricity supply in the school. Where we have windows with glass in, they literally have an open space to let light into the classroom. Wow. It's a, it's a, 
it's a breeze block building but the the school has really good results and the difference is you know children still get disciplined over there whereas in Europe except for now it's totally taboo to be able to smack a child or anything like that yeah it's getting that way in the United States as well yeah but the children have so much respect for the elders so the following day what we did we we were in town getting some more supplies for the dugouts and we went into a little cash and carry and we bought a thousand lollipops (laughs) and we took them up to the school we went to see the headmaster told him you know we had a little surprise for the children Andrea (laughs) <laughs> at 11 o'clock when they had like the little break um, I couldn't say when they came out into the school yard I can only describe it as when they came out into the dust bowl <laughs> yeah um, because the teacher stood on a plinth which was about three foot high and all the children were round in a circle and the headmaster didn't say anything he literally just like crossed his hands and every child, without fail, just went deadly silent. There was no talking, just instant respect. Now that's respect, the, yeah, that's what I was going to say. And the, the headmaster said, listen, we've got some visitors here. We've got a little surprise for you. We'd like you to line up class one, class two, class three, et cetera, et cetera. Andrea, my lasting memory is them kids, every single one of them came up to you with a smile and everyone said thank you without fail. <laughs> just for just for receiving a little lollipop. Afterwards you couldn't do anything else but break your heart. At dinner time they had one little you know, every child has to bring a little ball of school. A little plastic ball, a metal ball, any type of container you can put some food in. Their dinner every day is a mixture of sweet corn and maize about an inch deep which they eat with the fingers, you know, and that's all they get while they're at school all day. Now, you look at that, but every child is just, every one of them's got a smile on the face. You know, you've got the famous saying from Africa, Hakuna Matata, from the Lion King. Well, in their language, that means we have no worries, and that's exactly the way they live their life. Simple and you know, worry-free. They just go about life because they've got nothing, they expect nothing. And yeah. when they get anything given, they are so grateful. And just a small amount makes a huge difference to the community in the surrounding yeah. area. And that's just a refreshing story for, for me to hear. I'm glad you shared that with us. What, one of the great things was, what, I, I've had a few people comment to me, why should we help that don't help themselves? Well, I'm afraid that's totally wrong. They do help themselves because when we went over there, the the team had deliberately not told us a couple of little things. The village elders and the the men in the village and the surrounding villages, because, you know, the children come to that school from, I would say, a five-mile radius. And um, they'd actually get in some wood, any old scraps of wood, and they'd built miniature five-a-side goals, especially for the children, because all the children are following the team. They all want to come to the academy, and they've made these little goals so they can see how much the children are enjoying it and how it's benefiting the children. The children have got something to do, and they've got a focus in life now. So they do go out, and, you know, the, the village elder gave a huge speech at one of the parties that we had for the presentation of the promotion medals of last year Mm -hmm. and he he told the whole village come on everybody you've got to back this scheme look at the this is the benefits we've had already and if we keep backing it and we help our you know our children as well it's going to benefit everybody in the long run which was a fantastic speech yeah i mean and when you see the difference it makes it shows what a difference that the sponsorship, the foreign sponsorship from, from us who have materially can have to those who don't have materially but, but still have that heart and have determination. And that's a great story. Well, 
when I speak to somebody about raising sponsorship or would would they like to donate, I suppose you can look at it this way. If myself and my wife went out for a meal and we have a couple of drinks while we're out having a meal, the night will probably cost us £50. Or in America, 80 you know, $80. Right. If you can if you can give up going out for a meal for one night, that's that's sponsoring and helping them children for a whole oh, year. Yeah. yeah. You know, and what we do is all that money goes into a central pot and it literally just pays the expenses but it improves. You know, um we've just bought the team a white line marking machine to mark the pitch. But what we've also done to help the children in the school, because the children had no sports facilities, we put in running lanes in, 100 metre running lanes, an eight track running lane, so the kids can have races now. And ju- it's just the simple things. Yeah. Uh, the school already uses the circumference of the pitch as their 400 metre track, and the children are out at every dinner break running round and round the pitch. You know, and you can just see that they didn't have that before because that was a, it was an area just full of trees, long grass, and now they've got an area where they can go out and, you know, do some sort of sport. That, that is awesome. And yeah, because I remember seeing the pictures, uh, before when they were playing with the trees around, including the, the gold mouth made out of tree limbs, large tree limbs. It was uneven and it bowed down in the middle. Uh, from where? So now, with the, the new video that we've seen uh, come come from the uh, the Friendship Cup, it, it's amazing the difference that you do see, and you see the quality that's on the pitch. But again, the sponsor the sponsorship has made a big difference, and I'm sure there's there's more to to be done as as the team goes for forward and progresses. The point we're at at the sponsorship for this coming season, as I say, we've almost got every almost. I think we've only got two or three more first-team players to sponsor, but we're waiting for our head coach, Dan, to decide which players are going to take the last few remaining places in the squad. He's got two weeks left to do that. So the players that we do have are already sponsored, but so far we haven't got one of our academy children sponsored. So this is going to be the big drive now. If you go on our Facebook page now, I've just put up all the pictures of the academy children. Yeah, I saw that. And what we say to people is, for £50 a year, you might be sponsoring a new star of the future. Yes. Um, Because even in the English Premier League, not many people will be aware there's not one single Kenyan player in the English Premier League. You've got a few of them in and around Europe. You've got one in the Scottish Premier League for Celtic. But we've never had a Kenyan play in the English Premier League. Our ambition out of the whole of this project, yes, we want the team to be successful. We want the kids to come through. You know, five of the kids have come out of the academy already at the end of last season, and they're in the first team for this season. Just last night, or a couple of nights ago, I was working out, the average age of our team is 23. Wow. You know, we've got a really, really a young team. Now... How good are they going to be in another couple of years? Right. So the the drive now is, please look on our Facebook page or on our website. Have a look at the pictures of the children in the academy. You can pick your own child. You know, you can have a look. There might be that pretty little face that somebody thinks, <laughs> oh, how cute. And um, sponsor them for a season. Excellent, excellent, and and we'll feature this on on the website as well uh, about the academy and and show the pictures there, but they're already there on the Facebook p- page for those who want to check it out and 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 help them out. And, and you know, from what I hear, I think if uh, if and when a uh, player from Kenya goes to the English Premiership, it's going they're going to have their history from Sunderland Karachi. I'm betting. I mean, with, with the support that's there and and now the coaching and the training. That's going on. I have every expectation that that lad will come from Sunderland Karachi's team from that from that club. But Gary, you know, running a little bit uh, long on time, I wanted to see. Tell us a little bit about the tournament, uh, the tournament itself. You know how that went about and uh, how the team did from each game. The tournament will only be run over two days, which means we have 
only four teams in the tournament. You, so you'll play your two semi-finals on the Saturday and you'll play your final on the Sunday. The draw was made at the headquarters of the sponsor, who's Northern Freight Services, of the competition. Mm-hmm. And the draw came out. It was Morandat against the motorbike riders and then Sight FC against Sunderland Karachi. After travelling 4,500 miles and watching the first semi-final, which kicked off at midday, Kenyan time, uh, Morandat beat the motorbike riders 3-1. It was 1-1 at half time. And then our boys played Site FC. And I think the problem we probably had was out Site FC were from the same division we were playing in last season. And because we beat them both times and we beat them in friendlies, I was determined the lads could never go into the game thinking this is an easy victory. Because I said to them, listen, this is Site FC's Cup Final. There's cameras here which are going to be beaming these around the world eventually. This is their opportunity to show everybody how good they are. And I says, they are a team who've stuck together through thick and thin. So they're always getting better. They're getting to know each other or getting older. Anyway, game kicked off. Mm-hmm. We went 1-0 up. They then went 2-1 ahead and we pulled back a goal just before half time, so it was two two at half time. Straight from kick off in the second half, Site FC went down the other end and scored. And all the way through, I, I would say ten minutes into the second half, it was literally a bombardment of the Site FC goal. Our boys we hit the bar twice, we hit the post once, and it got to three minutes before full time. Site FC was still leading three two, and wow. the guys who travelled <laughs> over, the guys who travelled over from England, we were all looking at each other and thinking, we're not even going to watch our boys in the final here. <laughs> anyway, we got a free kick. This is no word of a lie, and you'll be able to see it on the clips. Thirty five yards out, and we were sitting in the dugout, and it was directly in line between us and the goal, and. John Eilbeck, one of the main sponsors who was sat next to us, actually turned to me and said, he'll score here. And I went, not from, <laughs> not from that distance, John. Anyway, the young guy who took it, I think he's only 19 or 20 year old. Great young lad. He's one of, And it's a brilliant story because he's an ex-orphan who was homeless and jobless. Andre he took the free kick better than Ronaldo or Messi. He curled <laughs> He curled it right into the top corner. Well, we just went absolutely crazy because we thought, great, we've got 15 minutes each way extra time coming up. And then, lo and behold, more or less straight from kickoff, uh, I think the referee gave three or four, three minutes extra time or injury time, and we scored another two goals in them three minutes. So yeah. we ended up winning it. And For anybody listening, if you do look at the highlights of the semi-final, that third goal is an absolute wonder goal, that free kick. Yeah. If you look at the fifth goal, we brought uh, one of our main strikers on, I would think with about 20, 25 minutes to go, a guy who gets called Jemba, uh, and he, he looked up at the keeper, he was running down the wing, he looked up at the keeper, saw him off his line, and he hit a shot from three or four yards in from the touchline and lobbed it straight over the back of the keeper in the back of the net. It was an absolute <laughs> wonder goal. Yeah, you know, Kurt and I, we, 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 we're still talking about that free kick. It was an amazing uh, shot. And, it, you know, for those who are listening, that we, we do link to the uh, the video from the, the home page uh, for safc-karachi.com. And it goes to the Kickstarter page, where, which has all the highlights from from the match. It, it, if you haven't seen it already, take a look. It, it's an amazing, it's an amazing atmosphere as well, um, as well as the game itself. So, tell us a little bit about about the atmosphere, because I mean, there were a couple of pitch invasions there. <laughs> <It looked like. laughs> well, I, I'm not frightened to say I was actually one of the ones who run on the pitch as well. <laughs> yeah. I think it was just Be such a example. release of. <laughs> tension, you know, the thought that we didn't think we were going to get through. Um, 
before we got involved, you know, the, the team used to just have a couple of friends and family used to come along watching. 20, 30 people used to come watch. And now they're pulling in a regular crowd of around about a 1,000. You know, and if you think it's all free, there's no charge to come in and watch the team, but the name's growing all the time and the crowd's getting bigger and bigger, which means eventually we'll have to put some sort of barrier around the pitch because at the moment we've got just pieces of string between the trees to try and... Well, we learnt the lesson from the semi-final when the crowd invaded the pitch on the third, fourth and fifth <laughs> balls that, that we had to put the string along the trees to keep the crowd behind. And I've got to give great credit to the crowd. During the final, they never came on the pitch once until the final whistle went. Pretty soon there are going to have to be some uh, stewards you're going to have to <laughs> put out there. So they'll, they'll help with crowd control. Yeah, well, we actually had two young lads, both who had a stick in the hand. I would say these young lads were about 12 year old. One took the crowd to the right-hand side of the dugouts. One took the crowd to the left-hand side. And we said to them two young lads, if you keep the crowd back away from the pitch, we'll give you 50 Kenyan shillings at the end of the game. And they were like, oh, what should I say? Little soldiers going up and down the line <laughs> for the whole game. Now, 50 Kenyan shillings to a child over there is a lot of money. It's the equivalent of 50 cents in the US or 30 pence in England. That just can get a child so much over there. The fact that he has a 50 Kenyan dollars, uh, 50 Kenyan shilling note in his pocket. And he was, it was like all his Christmases had come at once. But he did a fun, (laughs) both of them did a fantastic job for us. And it's just the little things like that, you know, they're, they were so enthusiastic to do that job for such a small amount. That's excellent. I mean, I, um, before we, we go, uh, Gary, I wanted to tell us a little bit more about the project, the, uh, the the documentary project that we're still looking forward to seeing. What can we expect from that? Well, we had a, a film crew uh, travel with us for the week. It's a film crew from the northeast of England called The Unlikely Lads. And what they did, they heard the story and they came along to meet me like a good few months before we went across and just realised this was an amazing story that can be told and let the whole world see it. Um, so they came across and they had to look at it from every possible different angle. Obviously, these guys are the experts, so they wanted to go and see the wildlife. They wanted to go down into the slum areas. They wanted to go into the ghettos. They, they wanted a full picture of life. They wanted to speak. The, and one of the things they liked as well is if they spoke to the village elders, they wanted the village elders to speak in their own language because English is a second nature language over there. Mm-hmm. And when they see ourselves going over, everybody speaks to you in English, even the children. But they didn't want that. They wanted it to be as authentic as possible. And then they used the team manager as an interpreter. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was great, you know. There's shots they've got inside the school. It'll give everybody the opportunity just to see, you know. We all see pictures on the TV from living conditions in different countries in Africa. I don't think it can actually believe it till you're there and you see it. You know, one of the biggest improvements we've had is we bought a two-roomed little apartment beside the pitch, only 50 yards from the pitch. And the two boys in our team who were orphans, they were homeless, they were jobless, they had nowhere to live, and they would literally scrape by. But actually, one of them's the one who scored the wonder-free kick, Ian. We, we've rented this office, so it gets used as the storage room for all the kit. It also gets used as the changing room before the game. It gets used for lots of different purposes. All, everything that the club owns now is held there. But because it's an interlinking room, the other two boys now have rent-free accommodation. They live in the room adjacent. And so really, they're at the security guards. But in return, 
they are responsible for marking the pitch ready for a match day, you know, with the white line marking machine. They have some duties to do. But when we went in, it was the third day of our visit when we first went into the office to have a look at the office. And I was absolutely shocked and didn't realise that our two boys were sleeping on what I can only describe as a deflated airbed on a concrete floor. Wow. And That's something else. Myself and one of the other sponsors looked, well, by the time we came away, we, one of the guys in our team who lives in the village is a welder. We give him the money, which was the equivalent of £38 in English money, which included the mattresses, and he built a set of bunk beds. Uh, complete with five inch mattresses, single mattresses, for the boys to sleep on. And this is an awful way of putting it, but it's probably the only way I could put it. To them, that's like living in a five star hotel, having a real mattress to sleep on. And yeah, yeah, I can understand or, that. Up to, uh, warm up off the concrete floor. So uh, you can see the improvements are there all the time. Um, so it, it's everything. Every penny we spend gets spent wisely. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really really a great thing. And and Gary, we're, we're going to run out of time here. So uh, finally, what do you want to tell the WFN audience about Sunderland AFC Karachi as a parting statement? Something about the academy or sponsorship or whatever you feel uh, you want to share. Probably the one thing I can say is every charity around the world has its good causes. The charities which I personally don't like are the ones who have people getting paid millions at the top of the tree. Because I don't see, if, if I'm donating to charity, why should some big fat cat at the top be driving around in a Rolls Royce or except for taking money away from that charity? Right. If you want a cause where every penny you donate goes right there, there's no overheads, and you'd like to donate, and you want to see what's happening all the time, you can always switch on the website, you can always switch on the Facebook page, and you can always ask questions on them pages if you want to know how one player's getting on in the team or how the team... But your, your updates are there all the time. So the nice part about it is you get to see where your money's spent. Yeah. I want to thank you for, for coming on for this interview and, and telling us of not only about the, the trip there, but also the effect the uh, the sponsorship is having, what effect the, the football club is having in the community and seeing how it's really improved life overall. And, you know, Sunderland Karachi holds a very special place in my own heart, you know, and, and we're always anxious to hear more as the season goes on so we, we'd like to ask you to come back uh, and give us an update later on in the season if that be okay would you do that yeah that's no problem at all great great well Gary I, I want to thank you again for, for coming on and uh, from Dre Footy and the, and the staff here at WFN we want to thank you all for listening and we'll talk to you again real soon